Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today we're looking at this. This is the Google Pixel 7. It's Google's latest flagship phone. It's not the Pro phone, but it is in their flagship lineup. And I wanted to tell you, I had to do it, seven things that I think are really cool about this phone. And let's just jump into it. So the first thing I really like about this phone is just the price. Uh, this guy costs $599 to start. That's $200 less than the equivalent iPhone 14. And I think it's just, a really good deal for the amount of phone that you get. Like this is full on a flagship phone from Google. It's not the absolute top of the line. There are a couple things that they save for the pro model, but you don't feel like this is a compromised phone. You don't feel like this is a budget phone. This is a really nice phone for a really good price. And I really appreciate that. The second thing I have to call out is the color. So I got the most fun color. You can get it in white or black, but I got it in this lemongrass green and it is, it's a look. I know not everybody's gonna like this as much as me, but I really appreciate a fun color, and this definitely scratches that itch for me. Um, also, just while I'm on the design, I think the camera bar is better than I thought it was gonna be. I found the last year's model, the all black one, to be a little boring, a little bit kind of like a giant monolith on the back of the device. This one feels, I didn't like it in pictures originally, but in person, I think it actually looks a little bit better than the Pixel 6. The next thing I like, and I will say I only like this, I don't love it, it's kind of like, it's better than Apple Solution in some ways, worse than Apple Solution in other ways, um, is transferring your data from your old phone to your new phone. So when I transfer from an old iPhone to a new iPhone, it's all done wirelessly and it takes a couple hours, but at the end of it, I'm able to basically just start using the new phone as if it were the old one and it just works. Like all my passwords transfer over, I'm still logged in, all the data is there, like it's pretty darn seamless, um, ironically, except for Google Apps, which Google Apps always make me sign in again. But in general, it's really awesome in that way, but it does kind of suck that it takes a couple hours for me to do this every single time, which is really annoying because both phones are completely out of commission. You can't take phone calls, you can't do anything in those couple hours, so that sucks. But the end result is very good. With Google's, it's kind of the opposite. It takes very little time, but you do not get everything as automatic on the new phone. So basically you connect it uh, to your old phone with USB-C. You can use the included USB-C cable, that's what I used. And for me, it took three minutes to transfer all my information from my Pixel 6 to my Pixel 7. But there's two big caveats. Caveat number one is that none of my passwords or like app data transferred over, which is partially why it was so much faster, also because it was just a wired USB-C connection. Um, but all of my stuff was not there, so I had to log into every single app again, which is annoying. All of Google's apps were still logged in, but every single other app, every third-party app, I had to log in again. So that's annoying, potentially a big time suck. Also, and I'm not sure if Apple does this as well, I'm trying to remember, but I'm not totally sure, um, none of the apps transfer over. So once it's done doing the initial transfer, it then took another seven minutes or so for it to download all the apps from the Google Play Store. So. Everything at the end of this was where it was, like my home screens were all the same, my wallpaper was all the same, my settings were all the same. That was all awesome, but I had to sign into all my apps again and that was kind of annoying. But ultimately it only took three minutes to transfer and 10 minutes total to get like all the apps there and then it was just a matter of signing in. Ultimately it was faster than doing the kind of full transfer that I did with the iPhone. But anyway, I like this, I don't love it. I love a combination of the two, like the reliability of Apple's transfer, but with the speed of a wired connection over USB-C, which maybe we'll get one day. Then there's the cameras. Uh, I, this probably deserves its own video and maybe I'll do something on that, but I really, uh, camera comparisons are touchy. All I will say is that photos from this camera look incredible. They're 12.5 megapixels binned down from a 50 megapixel main sensor. No, you cannot shoot 50 megapixel RAWs. Um, so not like Apple does with the iPhone 14 Pro. Um, that's a bit of a disappointment, but it's fine. 12.5 megapixels is still fine. Um, the ultra wide, it does not do autofocus, so it can't do macro and all that, but it's a pretty fine ultra wide, not quite as wide as the iPhone. If you're used to that, in the camera app, it actually says 0.7X, not 0.5X, which um, a lot of other cameras do. So not quite as ultra wide, but still quite wide. Um, and then the video is really good. I think regular video looks good. They have a new cinematic mode that does not look good. It looks worse than what Apple shipped last year, which was only okay. The uh, cinematic mode in the new iPhones is much better and is really, really good. Uh, but yeah, cinematic mode, I'll show a comparison here of my dog. It really struggles. Um, I would not recommend cinematic mode now. It's locked at 1080p. Ugh, it's just not that good. 
Thing number five I like is the always on display. I think the always on display is really great. I think Google has a good always on mode that shows you the time. It shows you how much time is left until your phone is fully charged. If it's currently charging, shows you notification dots um, or icons, I should say, that let you know what apps have presented notifications. I think Apple's solution is more technically impressive, um, but it's definitely controversial. Some people think it's too on. Um, some people like me really like it, but yeah, it's definitely more controversial. Some people are turning it off. With the Pixel 7, I think it's less technically impressive, but less controversial as well. I think it's just a good always on mode and yeah, totally gets the job done. So I like this feature. Okay, and switching to the overhead for item number six, and that is dictation. Dictation has been great on Google devices for a long time, and it's still really good in the Pixel 7. Now, Apple did improve dictation quite a bit in iOS 16, so let's do a comparison. I'm gonna send an example text message uh, just in the Notes app to give you an idea for how they work, how quickly they work, and how accurate they are. Hey, do you wanna to go to the Lego store tomorrow? I hear they have their holiday collection in stock and I wanted to check it out. Are you in? All right, so how did they do? Um, they did pretty good. I think both of them were pretty accurate. Uh, Siri didn't quite understand that the uh, are you in was a second question or a second sentence, so it didn't do the punctuation there, but they do a pretty good job of adding punctuation correctly, adding question marks where they're supposed to be. And I actually like that when, uh, when Apple isn't quite sure about something, it will highlight it and give you uh, other alternatives that it could have been. It's, it's showing you what uh, the most likely thing is, but they'll give you some alternatives that it might have heard and gives you an idea or the ability to change it really quickly. I really like that, but as you can see, Google was more accurate in this scenario, and I think that in general, they just are a little bit more accurate when it comes to dictation. And then finally, let's wrap it up by going to the settings app and going to accessibility. Google does a great job with accessibility. There's tons of things in this update, too much for me to show, um, but you can go in here and check things out. Um, they have some really cool stuff, like they have a magnification feature, which if I turn this on, I can be like on my home screen and be like, hmm, I can't quite read this. And I can hit this, tap somewhere, and then I can actually just zoom in on whatever's on screen and scroll around with two fingers, and then I can just uh, tap the thing that I wanna tap. And yeah, it's just really, really nice to have stuff like that. If I switch on over here, let's go ahead and turn that off. Um, there's select to speak, there's extra dim, so you can actually make the display go dimmer than normal. There's an extra dim mode, which is nice. Um, obviously there's display size and text, and you can tweak all those here. Um, but there's an accessibility menu you can bring up anywhere, uh, voice access to kind of have the device read out things to you, vibrations, like there's all sorts of stuff here. There's live captions. So anything that's making, or anything that's talking on your screen, you can have captions show up, live transcribe, uh, doing speech to text. Um, there's tons of stuff here. You can do audio descriptions and movies and stuff, sound amplifier if you have headphones in. Yeah, there's just a ton of accessibility stuff here that I really appreciate. Google spending the time making happen. So those are seven things I think are pretty cool about the Pixel 7 that are pretty nice. And as an iPhone user, I appreciate. Um, there are some things I don't like as much, namely the fingerprint reader right here in the screen is terrible. I do not like it at all. I think it's really bad. And if this was my daily phone that I was going to use for everything, I think it would really frustrate me. They did kind of offset that with an insecure, insecure face unlock, um, which I guess is a nice convenience, although it's not for everything. You can't do payments with it. But anyway, this video is about things that I like. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful if you're considering the Pixel 7. If it was, drop a like down below and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.